p.m. If we could all uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And Lonnie, why don't you lead us in it this evening? My pleasure. Please join me in the pledge. Pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Brew. Yes, sir. Uh-oh, where's Chief White? Mr. Cobb, would you mind? Okay, if, uh, if you'd like to join us, please join us in prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for our wonderful city that we call home. Thank you for our council, Lord, and their leadership and their willingness to serve. Thank you for our staff. Please be with us tonight as we do the community's business. And give us wisdom, Lord, and let your will be done. Please let us deliver us home safely, Lord, in your name. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. All righty, let's move along here. We have no... No cer ceremonial items this evening, Mr. Cobb? Ms. Uh, no, sir, there are none. Okay. Moving on, approval of minutes uh, for the meeting of January 5th, 2015. I'd like to entertain a motion to do so. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, call the vote. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on, item number three, public comment. This is the audience's time to address the council on any item that's not on our agenda. I have no written request. Is there anybody in the audience like to do so at this time? Seeing none, I will close public comment and move on to the consent agenda, item four through seven. What is the pleasure of council? Mr. Mayor, make a motion to adopt the consent agenda as is. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Councilman? I'd like to pull item number uh, six off, please. Item number six, motioner and seconder agree? Yep. Uh, item number six will now become item number 7A. All agree? Yep. All righty. Anything else? All righty. The motion on the table then is to adopt item four, five, and seven. Item six becomes 7A. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item 7A, former item 6, resolution number uh, 2947-15, construction management at risk services. Mr. Cobb, why don't we uh, get a brief introduction on this item, please, and then we'll turn it over to Councilman Britton. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a request for City Council to approve the selection of Wharton Smith, Inc. to provide construction management at risk services on an as-needed basis. Um, the, this is an alternative procurement process that allows the city to select a firm based on qualifications. In other words, we issued an RFQ for this and centralizes the responsibility for construction under the, under the uh, construction management at risk contract. Uh, the firm, basically, it brings the firm in on the front end is what it does. And uh, it centralizes a lot of the decision making. Um, the, um, you know, rather than designing the project and then bringing the contractor in after the design is completed, you bring the contractor in on the front end so that you get uh, construction advice during design. The staff had looked at using this method for uh, utility improvement projects for less than $2 million. Uh, a, as I mentioned before, an RFQ was issued on October the 26, 2014. We did receive two submittals, uh, both of the, which were responsive. Uh, the, there was an evaluation committee that met and uh, reviewed the submittals, and they ranked uh, Wharton Smith to be the uh, recommended contractor. Uh, each of these projects will be done on a work order basis, so as once again, it's as needed. Uh, there's a proposed term of one year with uh, two annual renewals for a total of three years under the contract. Uh, it's recommended that uh, City Council adopt Resolution 2947-15. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Councilman Britton, you pulled the item off. Uh, you have the floor. Well, I, I guess I'd, I'd like to start with, do, do any of uh, the four of you know anything about this concept? To be honest, this is a staff initiative, so uh, and that, and that's, you, you being the expert in this field, I would defer to you. That, 
that was my question when I saw it. Is I, I really would have preferred that we had a briefing on on this. Uh, my other thought, having uh, not had the briefing, is why does council need to be involved unless this is to approve a, a contract? Um, normally, construction management at risk is a is a uh, discrete contract for a discrete project, and I was kind of concerned about the uh, as-needed basis. It's almost like we're we're sole sourcing a uh, an on-call construction contractor. Um, that's just kind of a few of the questions I had, and I, what I would recommend is that we we uh, table this for a, a week or two, and maybe Brian, you can get, go get us some case studies, some uh, some clear savings that we could uh, achieve from this on a two million dollar project. I'm not sure uh, if if what those savings would be. Would it be a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars, which is certainly worth looking into? But I'm not sure. Uh, we need to do this in this matter. We could do a, maybe a, a better job pre, pre project planning uh, or do a design build, which is another concept. So I'm just kind of curious as to how we got to this point and would like a little bit more uh, background and, and justification for it. Okay. Anything else, sir? No, that's good. Mr. Cobb, is this time sensitive at all or can this wait till there are I don't think meeting? it is. I don't think it's time sensitive. No, nope. all righty. Um, <clears throat> could we get Mr. Britton the information that he is looking for? And my suggestion would be to have the discussion time with Councilman Britton first mm -hmm. and then brief the rest of us sure. uh, after Mr. Britton has used his expertise on it. And let me be clear that I'm not really questioning the, uh, the process we went through to, to select the, the contractor. I'm more concerned with the, with the, uh, the concept itself and, and how we intend to use it and and what value it'll provide us. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Councilman. I just want to, I just want to ask, you know, I, I, I was pretty clear on this when I read it, but you know, Brian, what you're trying to do here is have somebody, and, and I think it's an actual good thing. You're trying to bring somebody in here with expertise in the, in the full package of a product to keep an eye on the con on the contractor to be our eyes and ears when we're not there. Is that, is that, that's basically the concept of that's this, That's part right? of it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I, as, as, that's not really the concept, is it? Because the way I read it is uh, you bring a construction contractor in to be the eyes and ears during design, and then he's the, he's the he's construction the contract. contractor. Yeah. He's not our eyes and ears. He's his eyes and ears. Well, the way it's well, worded. Act as, it would be our general contractor, yes. He would be the GC. Right. They would act as the GC, yes. So w one person is going to... Uh, that that uh, he may have a point there because the way I'm reading it is you're bringing this construction management person and he's and it says he's going to bring in his 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 contractor at the time so everything is central so are we having one person policing himself or are we having a, a, a management company watching the contractor because if it's one person I would agree with Councilman Britton mm -hmm. but if it's two people and someone's watching the contractor to do it the way we want then this is a good idea in my view. Actually, Mr. Grisowskis is here. Why don't we have him come up? And he's, he's been the lead on this, and I think it would be best to have him give you the details on it. <clears throat> yes, sir. The, the, the idea of the concept is, as, as the county manager said, you bring in the contractor during the construction planning phase. As they're doing that, he's looking at constructability and getting quotes and fighting to get the best products and, and uh, timing for the project. So when the project is bid, you don't run into extra risk, extra time, and contractors that didn't think they had different responsibilities. You basically, when you have a complex project, this is an easier way to bring all the subcontractors together. There's the thing. I was just reading so, Okay, because it says the CMR provides... Um, takes bids and manages the prime contract. So you bring somebody in to, to get the Yeah, and, and, the and projects, and we're specifically talking about taking the wastewater plant from a 1.5 MGD plant to a 2.4 MGD plant. plant has to stay operational. There are about 20 different subcontractors going to be working on the project. The GC is really going to make a very little amount of money. Right. So bringing somebody in on the front to manage all that, instead of putting it out on the street on a traditional bid, makes a lot of sense. If you put it on a street of a traditional bid, the engineer is going to design it. But when the contractors look at the bids, they have a month to bid on. 
they're actually going to get somebody to quote on stuff on a verbal on a week or two. So you actually, this way, you actually have thoughtful pricing up front. And if you run into a problem, you can change directions before the project is bid. A lot of other cities use this, Joe? Uh, it's becoming more popular on complex projects where you use a lot of subcontractors on it. School boards, universities are doing a lot for university improvement. Castleberry just did this, for an example. I don't have all the examples with me tonight. I, I wasn't prepared, but I can bring you some examples back and some more information. Okay. So let me get this clear. I, what I heard you say is that you'd bring on the CMAR mm -hmm. during the planning phase. Correct. And then he He's stays provide, he, on he, our contract. Yeah, he actually bids. But he's not the prime contractor. He actually is going to be getting bids and, construct, and, and working to construct this project. And they're going to bring, bring a price back. And then the council at that time will be able to move forward with this contract or we can throw the whole thing out and get bids. Either way, the city wins because we get all the contractors' knowledge up front. Um, that's just the way it works. He's taking a little bit of risk by working with us, too. All right. Well, uh, Come back and we'll, we'll talk yeah. some more. It, it almost sounded like they're going to bring us back a price on the project. Is that what you said? Yes, they will. So are we tipping our hand to the, to the contractors out there as what we're willing to pay for this project? Do that every time. Well, I'm just curious. I mean, the, you know, uh, blind, blind the CMAR the, is going to give us the price. He already knows. He's going to give us a price. Right. And then once we have that price, if we reject it and throw it out for competitive bidding, everybody knows what the price Everybody's going to know the price, correct. Hmm. Well, good catch by Councilman Brayton. Uh, let me entertain a motion. We'll continue this, Joe, and then get together with all of us. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to continue 2947-15 till the first meeting in February. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any other discussion? No. Seeing none, call the vote. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And Mr. Cobb and Mr. Grisakis, please start with uh, Councilman Britton and then get with the rest of us. Sure. Thank you. Moving on, uh, public hearings. We're up to item number eight, which is ordinance number 1607. Nuisance abatement. Mr. Group, can you please read this ordinance by title only? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. An ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, relating to public nuisance abatement, amending Section 22-144 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Oviedo, transferring Article 8 of the Land Development Code to the Code of Ordinances, providing for penalties, providing for severability and enforcement, providing for a savings provision, providing for conflicts, providing for codification, providing for correction of Scrivener's errors, and providing for an effective date. That's the ordinance by title, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Group. Mr. Kyle. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend the city's code of ordinances to address nuisance, nuisance abatement, as well as to transfer Article 8 of the Land Development Code, which is basis, it works, addresses nuisances as well, from the Land Development Code into the code of ordinances. Uh, this ordinance, it expands the provisions that uh, determines what constitutes sanitary nuisances. It addresses stagnant water, animal excrement, outside storage, graffiti, street encroachments, uh, and other t health hazards relating to buildings and structures. It also gives code enforcement and the police department teeth, and that's the big thing that it does. It, we, it really addresses the code enforcement end of, of, of nuisances. Uh, it's recommended tonight that the city council conduct a public hearing and adopt ordinance number 1607. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. As Mr. Cobb mentioned, this is a public hearing. I will open up that portion of the hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address council on ordinance number 1607? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing portion and move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to adopt motion, uh, resolutions uh, ordinance. Ordinance 1607. Sorry. Second. Motion second. <coughs> Councilman Schenck, any questions? No, nope. great job. Councilwoman? No, nope. good. No? Nope. Good. Everyone's good? All righty, with no questions uh, being had, I will call the vote. Motion on the table is to adopt ordinance number 1607. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving along to item number nine, a companion to item number eight. This is ordinance number 1608, vacant and abandoned building condemnation and demolition ordinance. Mr. Groot, can you please read 1608 by title only? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. 
an ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, requiring the maintenance of abandoned or vacant buildings and structures, providing for definitions, procedures, standards, and requirements relative to the protection of properties and the prevention of public nuisances and dangerous circumstances, providing for registration, providing that neglected or abandoned buildings are added to the list of circumstances which are declared public nuisances, providing for implementing administrative actions, providing for penalties or enforcement, providing for conflicts, providing for a savings provision, providing for severability, providing for codification and correction of Scrivener's errors, and providing for an effective date. And that's the ordinance by Tyler, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Group. Mr. Cobb? Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a, an ordinance that amends the uh, city's code of ordinances to address vacant and abandoned buildings. It uh, provides specific definitions uh, for uh, abandoned and that deal with abandoned and vacant buildings. Uh, it establishes that buildings or structures may not be vacant for more than 180 calendar days unless the property is subject to a building permit. Uh, it determines that structures, that buildings and structures uh, need to be boarded uh, voluntarily by the owner or by the city and shall require, it requires rehabilitation of these structures. Uh, vacant properties shall be maintained uh, in a structurally sound condition and comply with the city's codes, and that includes the electrical and gas, plumbing, exterior features, billing codes. Uh, it adopts the American Society of Engineers guideline to structural condition assessment for, of existing buildings so that the, for the building official and the city injure, engineer to use when making assessments. Uh, it addresses fire safety, security, debris removal, uh, warning signage, it also provides for a hearing officer process, and that in, in this process, all costs to the city can be reimbursed, um, as well as uh, assessed as part of a special access, assessment. Uh, it requires registration of any vacant or abandoned buildings other than single-family homes. It also provides for an, a method of condemnation and demolition of buildings and structures wherein the city is authorized to condemn and order to a building to be demolished and removed or to be put back into a sound state of repair. Uh, it's recommended that the City Council conduct a public hearing and adopt Ordinance Number 1608. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. This is a public hearing uh, for Ordinance Number 1608. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address Council at this time? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing portion and move on to the pleasure of council. I'm going to make a motion to adopt ordinance number 1608. Second. Motion second. Councilman Shank, you have the floor. I can. Thank you. Deputy Mayor? No. To good. The left? Good. Good. Everyone's good. Guys, great job on it as usual. Mm -hmm. uh, we do appreciate it. I know we vetted this out at first reading a couple of weeks ago. So thanks for all the information. With that being said, the motion on the table is to adopt ordinance number 1608. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item number 10, which is ordinance number 1609. Uh, this is a comprehensive plan amendment for Central Florida Regional Hospital. Mr. Groot, would you do us the pleasure of reading ordinance number 1609 by title only, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, amending ordinance number 896, the Comprehensive Land Planning Ordinance is previously amended, providing for amendment to the City of Oviedo Comprehensive Plan, said amendment changing the future land use of approximately 6.26 acres from industrial IN to commercial CM as described in this ordinance, providing for legislative findings and intent, providing for assignment of the land use designation, providing for severability, providing for conflicts, providing for codification, the correction of Scribner's errors, and directions to the code codifier and providing for an effective date. That's the ordinance by title, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Group. Mr. Cobb? Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a request to amend the city's comprehensive plan future land use map to change the future land use designation of approximately 6.26 acres from industrial to commercial. Uh, the property is located 930 feet, 938 feet west of Broadway Street, approximately 300 feet south of Avito Mall Road, and on the north side of Platt, Pratt Place. Uh, this is a small-scale comprehensive plan amendment. And what that means is once the City Council adopts the amendment, it will be sent to the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity. If they choose not to review or no one appeals, it will become effective in 31 days. Uh, this is a, in comprehensive plan terms, this is a reduction in density and intensity. Uh, a commercial future land use designation carries a maximum intensity of 0.5 floor area ratio. 
a, uh, the, the existing industrial future land use designation carries a 0 0.6 uh, floor area ratio. Uh, the proposed uh, com commercial future land use designation is compatible with the surrounding uh, future land use designations actually in this area. Uh, this is um, the predominant uh, future land use designation. It also brings this property in line with the other properties that have been uh, changed by the City Council in the past for, for the property owner. The Development Review Committee and the Planning, Zoning, and Appeals Board both reviewed this uh, comprehensive plan amendment and recommend adoption. It's recommended that City Council conduct a public hearing and adopt Ordinance Number 1609. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Does the applicant have anything to add to the presentation? Name and address. You know how, to, how this works, Javier. How are you tonight? Good evening. Uh, I'm Javier Armand at CPH. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Central Florida Regional, uh, Central Florida Regional Hospital, Oviedo. And I uh, would like to extend our gratitude to staff, uh, Mr. Cobb, and to you all to, uh, for your, uh, your votes and your support in this effort. Uh, so uh, we look forward to uh, your favor in the second item, number 11, that's coming up. And I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. As mentioned, this is a public hearing. I will open that portion of the hearing up now. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address council on ordinance number 1609? Hearing none, we will close the public hearing portion and move on to the pleasure of council. Mayor, make a motion to adopt uh, ordinance number 1609. Second. We have a motion and a second. Councilman Shank, you have the floor. Thank you. Mayor and CPH. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. Councilman Britton. I got a quick question. Ron, maybe you can help me out with this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going back in the memory banks, probably back to the 90s, when uh, it came before the BOA to I thought changes from industrial <coughs> to commercial for the uh, the big box, and at the time the decision was to remain industrial because that was the only place uh, uh, we could put a hospital, and that the hospital would be an, an industrial use. Is the hospital actually a commercial use? The hospital is a commercial use. Um, if I remember correctly, when the big box came through, it was to change it to PUD. Okay. And the arguments that I remember during the public hearing, the uh, probably the most um, effective argument was was that PUD afforded a good level of protection for the city, but the, the PUD being proposed was not something that people wanted, if I remember correctly. But uh, we changed the property to commercial when the uh, when when with the with the hospital's original properties. Okay. We that's when we went to commercial. Um, this property is just north of those the prior properties that you uh, that you okay. that just you wanted changed. to clear up my memory. Thanks. You're welcome. <coughs> anything else, sir? No, that's it. Deputy Mayor, do you have anything? No, I'm good. Councilman Hankin? No, sir. Looking forward yeah. to it. All righty. Uh, hearing no other discussion, one more time, anything? I will call the vote. The motion on the table is to adopt ordinance number 1609. So all in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to the companion, it is ordinance number 1610. Item, uh, oops, what item number is that? 11? 11. 11. Item number 11. Uh, Mr. Groot, could you read Ordinance 1610 by title only for us, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, amending the official zoning map of the city by changing the zoning district of approximately 6.26 acres of property located 938 feet west of Broadway Street, approximately 300 feet south of Oviedo Mall Road, and on the north side of Pratt Place from Industrial I-1 to Commercial C-2. Providing for legislative findings and intent, implementing actions, non codification, severability, conflicts, and an effective date. And that's the ordinance by title, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Group. Mr. Cobb? Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a request to uh, change the zoning district of approximately 6.26 uh, acres uh, from industrial I 1 to uh, commercial C 2. Uh, the key to this is that the commercial C 2 zoning district is. A, an allowable zoning district within the commercial future land use designation that you just adopted. Uh, the commercial future land use designation has three zoning districts uh, varying in intensity, the office commercial, the C1 commercial, and the C2 commercial. 
The C2 commercial in this area is the predominant zoning district in this area. Therefore, the proposed zoning district is compatible with the surrounding areas. Uh, the maximum development that could occur under it would be 114,345 square feet of commercial uses. Uh, the Development Review Committee and the Planning, Zoning, and Appeals Board both reviewed this request and recommend adoption. It's recommended that City Council conduct a public hearing and adopt Ordinance Number 1610. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Javier, do you have anything to add? All righty. Uh, this is the public hearing portion uh, for Ordinance Number 1610. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address Council at this time? Hearing none, we will close the public comment portion and move on to the pleasure of Council. Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Make a motion to adopt Ordinance 1609. Second. 1609. 1610. 1610. Oh, I'm sorry, 1610. I'll second 1610. All right, we have a motion and a second. Deputy Mayor, any questions? Uh, no, I'm good. All right. Thank you. Councilman Britton, you're good. Councilman Hankin, Councilman Shank. Nothing, sir. Quick question, Brian. I asked um, at the last meeting, and perhaps you have an update for us, the continuation of Westgate, or what was formerly known as <coughs> Westgate Drive, is um, <coughs> continuous to... Um, the acquisition of this parcel by the hospital. And I know we're working with the adjacent landowner. Has there been any further movement you can share with us? My understanding is the survey's complete and now the appraisers have have the survey and I'm not I don't have a date for when the survey's due back, but Mr uh, I think they got it earlier. Um, it was like mid December when mm -hmm. they got it, so it usually takes around thirty days. So we should be getting it soon. Okay. And the adjacent property owner still being as cooperative as yes, ever. Yes, sir. Good. Very cooperative. Good. That's what we like to hear. All righty. Any other questions? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. The motion on the table is to adopt ordinance number 1610. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving along. Good night, Javier. Uh, moving along, we're up to ordinance number 1611, graffiti. Mr. Groot, can you please read Ordinance 1611 by title only, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, relating to graffiti and graffiti regulation and abatement, providing for legislative finding, findings and purpose and intent, providing for definitions, providing for prohibitions and obligations relative to property and conduct, providing for conflicts, providing for enforcement and penalties, providing for the taking of administrative actions, providing for a savings provision, providing for severability, providing for codification and the correction of Scribner's errors, and providing for an effective date. And that's the ordinance by title, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Groot. Mr. Cobb. Thank you, Mayor. As, um, as the ordinance title says, this is, a, this is an ordinance to address graffiti vandalism and to establish a program for the removal of graffiti uh, from public and private property. Uh, it does provide for definitions, uh, various definitions, such as paint containers and graffiti implements, uh, that will be used by code enforcement and the police department when enforcing the ordinance. It prohibits uh, persons under the age of 18 to have in their possession graffiti implements as, um, as defined in the ordinance. It also establishes a process for the removal of graffiti. It establishes a hearing process before the hearing officer as well. The big thing about this is it gives the city teeth when dealing with graffiti. It was something that we didn't have in our current code of ordinances. We were, before we were stretching to apply different regulations to it, this now gives us a direct uh, program to apply to graffiti. The good news is, is that we don't have a huge graffiti problem. Uh, we do have some graffiti in the city, but this gives us the opportunity to get it cleaned quicker. I'd also like to say a big thank you to Mr. Groot, as well as to Mr. O'Rourke and uh, Chief Chud now and Dr. Correa, uh, we, everyone working together, we've been able to bring, this, uh, bring this, these, this series of ordinances tonight that you had before you. And it was, it was due to everyone pitching in and uh, bringing ideas to the table and questioning things. It was a very good process, good discussion. So I want to give them credit for their hard work that they did. Uh, it's recommended tonight the City Council conduct a public hearing and adopt when it's number 1611. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. At this time, I will open up the public hearing portion. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address us on ordinance number 1611? Hearing none, we will close the public hearing portion and move on to the pleasure of council. Mayor, make a motion to adopt ordinance number 1611. Second. 
Motion second. Councilman Schenck, you have the floor. Uh, again, thank you to staff. They All of these were grouped together and, and did a great job on all of them. Deputy Mayor? Um, good. Councilman Britton? Good. Councilman Hankin? Great job, staff. Appreciate it. All Hearing no further, any further discussion. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor of the motion to adopt ordinance number 1611, please do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All righty, moving along. First reading of ordinances. I have a funny feeling that's what all these folks to our left are here for. Uh, first one, ordinance number 1613. Mr. Groot, would you please read ordinance number 1613 by title? Yes, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, amending ordinance number 896, said ordinance being the comprehensive land planning ordinance as previously amended. Providing for amendment to the City of Oviedo comprehensive plan, changing the future land use of approximately six. 0.41 acres described in this ordinance from rural RL to low density residential LDR and conservation C, providing for legislative findings and intent, providing for severability, providing for conflicts, providing for codification and directions to the code codifier, and providing for an effective date. And that's the ordinance by Tyler, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Group. Mr. Cobb? Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a request to amend the comprehensive plan future land use map uh, to designate approximately 6.41 acres from rural to low density residential and conservation. Uh, the area to be designated conservation is located within the Econ Lockhatchee River Protection Zone. Uh, this is a consistent uh, request, uh, consistent with uh, the sanctuary to the north as well as uh, the properties to the east in Live Oak. So this is, brings about consistency with this property. Uh, the low density residential request is to, this is the western part of a 16 acre tract uh, the council earlier designated the eastern 9.6 acres in low density residential. Uh, this is to bring the rest of the property into the low density residential while also providing the conservation protections um, to the Econ Lockhatchee protection area. The um, intent of the, the applicant intends to develop the entire 16 acres with uh, a 48 lot single family subdivision. This also qualifies as a small scale subdivision. So once, a, if adopted by city council, uh, it will be sent to the Department of Economic Opportunity. If they choose not to review or no one appeals, uh, the, the uh, amendment will become effective within 31 days. Uh, the Development Review Committee and the Planning Zoning Appeals Board both reviewed this, this amendment and recommend adoption. Uh, it's recommended that city council uh, Schedule a public hearing for Monday, February 2nd, 2015. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion to schedule a public hearing for ordinance number 1613 on February 2nd, 2015, here at Oviedo City Hall in the Oviedo City Council Chambers, 400 Alexandria Boulevard, Oviedo, Florida, 32765 at approximately 6.30 p.m. So moved. Second. Motion second. Councilman Schenck, anything? No, sir. Councilman Hankin? I have one question. Why well, have the MI folks here, if I may, Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. um, if somebody can answer a question about the road, um, just a quick one. Um, on 419, as you have, you have those uh, those first 30 some odd homes where it's all, you know you guys have already done the road. You have a turning lane when you're coming east. You have a left-hand turn lane into that property. Is there going to be when you're heading west? A turn lane also to go in there or is it just going to be you're going to have to slow down on 419 I've been getting a lot of a lot of questions about that one Chad Moorhead Matt Moorhead and 431 East ratio the county did not require a right turn they did not they only required a left-hand turn lane but yes. not a right you think that's going to be a little dangerous sure. getting turning into that subdivision I mean when I saw that one going I say that's a good idea and then I, you know that other one I mean they're gonna to have to stop on four, I mean, you do have a light there by the firehouse. So hopefully, yeah, that would help. And, and you also have two westbound lanes. Yeah, so people are going to see people slowing down to turn right in there. They're going to. Yeah, just kind of weird. If it was a two-lane road, yeah, they, they probably would have required a right turn. Right. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Okay. Councilman Brayton, do you have anything? I'm good. <clears throat> Is there a rep from MI here? Not the engineering firm. Can you come on up. <clears throat> Name and address for the record and. Cabrera, MI Homes, 400 International Parkway, Suite 470, Lake Mary, Florida. Uh, we appreciate everybody coming out this evening. And before we take this matter up any further, at least in my mind, 
uh, and I know you are making strides to addressing some of the residents' concerns out at the sanctuary. Can you update me on where you are with that and when is that going to be completed? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, like team, effort, team effort here. <laughs> no, that's called passing the buck, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, Derek Henry, in my homes, 400 International Parkway, Lake Mary. And Brian's been very receptive, and all of you have been very receptive. Um, Brian would have been here tonight, but he's in the hospital, so uh, I apologize for that. Um, yes, we have met with the residents of Sanctuary. Um, we actually had a community meeting that we had with them, addressed their concerns, and we actually met some additional residents on site, walked it, showed them how everything was going to be installed. Uh, we have a PVC fence is going up between our property and their property in phase one. Uh, that should be going in next week, which is what we promised them. Um, so we're, we're working with them and making sure that there are no issues. All right. So is it safe to say that the uh, messages I've been getting and the emails council has received will go away by the time this comes back to us on February 2nd? I will, I will say that we have addressed their issues and, and we've discussed it, whether they're going to bring it here or not. I, I can't speak okay. for them, but yes, sir, we have, like I said, we've personally gone out there and walked their backyards with them okay. on their issues and pointed out what we're going to do for phase two and what we're doing. I mean, that phase know, what two is getting the fence as well. It's just going to be a continuation. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I appreciate the update and uh, it would just be best by the time we have the public hearing in two weeks, if you can eradicate all of their concerns or as many of them as you can. We're, we're trying. Uh, yeah. I promise you, you don't want trying. them in here. So. Uh, I, I agree. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, can I just ask you, is that subdivision the, the one that uh, you're, you're trying to have approved here tonight, the 17 homes on the western side, is there also going to be curb cuts on 419 for that, or are you planning on just having the ones for the one you're building now and you'll go through there? It's just the one entrance. Just the one entrance. Yes, sir. All right. I just want to go back to your engineer's thing for a second. I'm not understanding why a turn lane coming west was not required. You know, they're both two lanes, east and west. I know the county didn't require it, but why would we not? Every other subdivision out there has a turn lane. I just think, and, I, and I've gotten some calls on it. That's why I'm bringing it up. Um, you know, why we wouldn't put a turn lane there. You know, you got people... Nobody does the speed limit on 419. They're always speeding. So some guy coming in there making a turn, you know, I just see problems there. Why would we not put a turn lane in there? Even, is it just because the county didn't require it or you guys don't want to put it in or you don't feel you need it? I think we need it, you know? I mean, what's the thought process by not putting in that turn lane in there from the westbound side? That I'm going to have to defer to my engineer because he's, right. he's the one that did design it. Okay. And I just you know, said, I know oh, we do. Fine. I mean, we have to perform. I know we have to form a traffic study and right. everything. So I'm sure that's how they come up I with it. I need to put that to bed because no, living out there and having a residents call a lot, I, I hear a lot about that. I'm just trying to understand. You're talking about it doesn't have two lanes. We have two lanes on both sides of 419, two heading east and two heading west, right? So you guys put in that left-hand turn lane, which is nice. Why would we not put it in there? Just clear me up on that. Well, Help me when out you with have that. a left turn lane, right. you generally have to stop before you turn. Right. If you want to get out of the trailway. Okay. When you have a right turn lane, it's a free low, a oh. free flow motion. Okay. So you're slowing down, but you're not stopping, so you're not going to get that same issue. Right. But there's also um, traffic count criteria as far as, you know, we're going to be 48 lots in there. Right. It's all done. Yeah. And that, does, that itself doesn't warrant the right turn. Yeah. Well, I'll disagree, but I'll defer to the professionals. I still think that people who are living in there, you know, there's 48 families going to live in there. And the traffic that comes down that road, you know, sometimes traffic studies and things don't see what we see in the real world. Having lived out in that part of the city for many, many years, you know, you just see the, you know, the traffic. And so I can just picture somebody making a turn in there one night and some guy just whipping through and, you know, not paying attention. It would just seem to me better. You did great on the other side. I just don't know why the county would not require it. And, you know, it, it certainly would have made it safer. You know, I'll put it that way. But... That's okay. what you all came with. That's fine. Councilman, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. How, not living out there, does every subdivision entrance have one? Does Live Oak have a right-hand turn off? Does Sanctuary have a right-hand at both entrances? And Riverside as well at both entrances? Riverside 
I don't think they have one in the second, do they? I don't think they have one in the second entrance. Sanctuary? On the right side. Yeah. How about like the one by Chiliota? The, the oh, Sanctuary yeah, no, second? No, not that one. Yeah. The main one. Yeah. Live Oak has both, but they have more homes right there. And you've got the main street across the street. Well, you know, I hate to ignore a councilman's concern who lives in the district. Um, can you address that at the next hearing and be prepared to possibly add one? Yes, sir. Well, we'll, we'll be prepared to discuss it. Might be. It's warranted. Might be your decision if you want to add one or not. How about that? BMI's decision. <laughs> It'll be someone's decision. You know, I just think honestly. I mean, for me, it's it's never really about giving you guys a hard time. It's just about you know. I always put myself in an average guy coming home at night, and you know, like I know when I live out in Riverside, there's a right turn lane on both entrances to, to that subdivision. Live Oak has one. You know, for whatever extra it might cost for the for the safety of those people that are going to live in there, it's something I think you should consider. I really do. Just just give it some thought, and when you come back here, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll get there. But you guys, I think you're doing good out there with the residents because I'm not getting any more calls. So whatever you did, keep doing it. Oh, that, 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 that's, we're, that, we're that's because fine. I'm on Facebook and they just keep tagging me. Well, <laughs> and I, I, we've also been out there with the city engineer. And say, Brian, you know, please pass along, Brian. He has been very responsive. You're doing everything we've asked you to do. Um, uh, you know, it's not a requirement to do everything just because everybody wants you to around the block. But it's it's doing. You've done everything we've asked you to do. You've been very very responsive mm -hmm. to meeting the needs, and I appreciate that. You know, it's uh, interesting. I'm looking at Google Earth here, and yeah, that's this, what I was just pulling up. What do they look, look like? like? Uh, they do have right turn lanes into the neighborhoods. They don't have a right turn lane into the junior high, but they do have a right turn lane into the fire department, which is strange to me. But uh, yeah, something to look at, guys. Really, a firehouse has one, huh? Look at that. Thank you. Good, thank you. Hmm. Oh, yeah, Sanctuary has it. Does it have it at both of them? Doesn't have it at the second one. Hmm. All right, we'll uh, be prepared to talk about that next hearing, please. Any other questions? Oops. I got knocked offline. Hang on, everyone. Sorry. All righty, there we go. All right, the motion on the table is to schedule the second public hearing for February 2nd here in the chambers at 6.30 p.m. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That was for Ordinance 1613. Moving on to item number 14, Ordinance number 1614. Mr. Groot, could you read that by title only, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, amending the official zoning map to change the zoning district of approximately 6.41 acres located on the north side of County Road 419, east and adjacent to Willingham Road from Agriculture A to Residential R-1BB, providing for legislative findings and intent, implementing actions, non-codification, severability, conflicts, and an effective date. And that's the ordinance by title, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Group. Mr. Cobb? Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a companion ordinance to the one that you just considered and scheduled a public hearing for. Uh, this is to designate the 6.1, 6.41 acres as R1BB. Uh, the R1BB or, uh, zoning designation is a single-family residential zoning designation, which is allowed within the low-density residential future land use designation. It would also bring these these properties in alignment with the 9.6 acres that were recent were earlier. Uh, change to R1BB. So it would bring R1BB zoning over the entire 16 acres. Uh, the Development Review Committee and the Planning Zoning Appeals Board both reviewed uh, this request and recommend adoption. It's recommended that City Council schedule a public hearing for Monday, February 2nd, 2015. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion to schedule a second pub or schedule the public hearing, excuse me, for ordinance number 1614 on February 2nd, 2015 at approximately 6.30 p.m. here at Oviedo City Hall in the Oviedo City Council Chambers at 400 Alexandria Boulevard, Oviedo, Florida, 32765. So moved. Second. <coughs> motion second. Councilman Schenck, anything? Nope. Councilman Hankin? No, sir. Councilman Britton? Deputy Mayor? Good. We're good. Motion on the table is scheduled a second public hearing. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 
Moving on to ordinance number 1615. Uh, this is alcohol beverage sales on Sunday. Mr. Groot, can you read this ordinance by title only, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Oviedo, Florida, relating to hours during which alcoholic beverages may be sold and, and relating penalties and remedies for pertaining to code or ordinance violations, provide for a savings provision, amending section 6-2 and 1-13 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Oviedo, Florida, provide for conflicts, provide for severability, provide for instructions relative to codification and the correction of Scribner's errors, and providing for an effective date. And that's the ordinance by title, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Group. Mr. Cobb? Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is an ordinance to amend uh, section 6-2 of the City's Code of Ordinances to uh, amend the time frame in which alcoholic beverages can be sold on Sunday. Uh, currently, they cannot be sold before 11 a.m. Uh, this would this would change the 11 a.m. to 7 a.m., bring it more in line with the rest of the days of the week. Uh, the ordinance also makes some clarifications into the penalty provisions of the city code. Uh, it's recommended that the city council schedule a public hearing for February the 2nd, 2015. And Mr. Cobb, just for clarification, this ordinance also brings us into compliance with the Seminole County Ordinance, correct? It makes us consistent, yes. Right. So. In other words, we were telling our publics that they, or our businesses, that they couldn't sell alcohol before 11 o'clock, but yet folks who go to ABC Liquor right next to Target, which is just over the line, and buy it. Is that correct? We were more restrictive, yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, schedule a public hearing uh, for ordinance number 1615 on February 2nd, 2015 at approximately 6.30 p.m. here at Oviedo City Hall in the Oviedo City Council Chambers, 400 Alexandria Boulevard, Oviedo, Florida, 32765. So, so second. Motion second. Any discussion from my right? From my left? Oh, sorry. Hearing none, call the vote. All in favor of the motion to schedule the public hearing for February 2nd at approximately 6.30 p.m. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to <clears throat> item number 16, it is uh, one of two resolutions. Uh, first one is resolution number 2949-15. Mr. Cobb. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a request to approve a preliminary subdivision plan for the Emporia Hammock Subdivision. It's a 52-lot single-family residential subdivision. It's located on the north side of Panther Street and the east side of Lake Charm Drive. Uh, the total uh, land area is approximately 38.31 acres. The future land use designation is low density residential. The zoning district is R1 residential. The minimum lot size for R1 is 8,500 square feet and the minimum lot width is 80 feet. Uh, the applicant proposes to build uh, lot sizes varying from 10,239 square feet to 21,767 square feet. The average lot width on the properties is around 80 feet. Some lots are at 90 feet as well. Uh, the subdivision will have two retention ponds as well as two recreation and open space areas. Lots 51 and 52 have been designated for model homes and sales offices. Uh, concurrency has been satisfied. Uh, the proposed development is consistent and compliant with the Land Development Code and the Comprehensive Plan. Uh, this, the applicant does propose to gate this subdivision with private right-of-ways. It also proposes to place a bus stop at the entrance to the subdivision on Lake Charm Drive uh, for students to wait uh, in a safe and sheltered site. The Development Review Committee uh, reviewed this uh, request and recommended approval. The Planning Zoning Appeals Board also reviewed this request and recommended approval with certain conditions. Uh, the staff and the applicant both concurred with the PZA's conditions and the conditions have been incorporated into the plans and the site development order. Uh, therefore, it is recommended that City Council adopt uh, resolution number 2949-15. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. You said those additions were already in the resolution? Yes, sir. Right. They've already been taken care of. Thank you, sir. I, I see the applicants here. The applicants have anything to add? All right, who's the brave one tonight? I'd like to talk about a turn lane off of Lake Charm Drive. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, good evening. David Stokes, Mad Moorhead and Glenn, 431 East Horatio Avenue, Suite 260. On behalf of Taylor Morrison, um, thank you for your time and your consideration for approval. Just here to answer any questions you may have on the project. Anybody have any questions for the gentleman? Mm, I don't. Mm. Not right now. We seem to be good. Let me ask you just one brief one. Has anything substantially changed since we went over this ad nauseum six months ago? I, yes, I couldn't find anything. Yes, sir. Okay, and you all agree with all the changes that are made? Yes, sir. Okay. That's all I needed to hear. Thank you. Have you Thank spoken you. with, resolved all your issues with the surrounding property owners? Um, drainage. We had some drainage issues. Uh, we're assuming that's all taken care of. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, yeah, we have actually construction plans in review right now with staff, and those plans, we've reduced both the volume and rate of stormwater for all design storms. Okay. Thank you. I have no request to speak forums, and is there anybody in the audience who'd like to address us on this? Hearing none, close the public comment portion and move on to the pleasure of council. <coughs> you, a motion to adopt resolution number 2949-15. Second. second. Motion, multiple seconds. Councilman Schenck, any questions? Sir, thanks a lot. Nice having a bus stop out there. Mm -hmm. Is it actually like a Lynx bus stop or a school bus stop? Okay, that's what I would assume. Just had to ask. There you go. Deputy Mayor, do you have anything? Yeah, no, I'm good. You're good? Councilman Britton? I'm good. At, uh, I think the fact that there are no uh, residents in here is a good sign. So, good. Councilman Hankin? No, sir. All right, all my questions have been answered. Mm -hmm. Anything else from anyone? No? All righty. Motion on table is to adopt resolution 2949-15. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, yeah, you can all go now. It's okay. <laughs> Next one where it is a continuance. I <laughs> Thank you all sitting here for five minutes. We should have put you in front. No, they want to build a subdivision. They can hang out for an hour. <laughs> Have a nice evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on, we are up to resolution number 2950-15. Uh, Mr. Cobb, I'll just turn this right over to you because I believe there's a request to continue. Uh, yes, Mayor, this is a request to continue. You first considered this resolution at your January 5th meeting, uh, and at that meeting the city, there was uh, one of the um, facades facing the south came into question, and council continued its consideration to tonight's meeting. Uh, Mr. Cavanaugh has a scheduling conflict. He is in Naples and could not attend. Therefore, he asks that we continue consideration to the February 2nd meeting. All right. Any disagreement from the council? I'd like to entertain a motion then to continue resolution 2950-15 to our February 2nd meeting. So move. Second. Is that a second? Yep. Okay. We have motion second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call the vote. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. It is continued. Discussion items. We have none. Mr. Cobb, if we keep this quick, we might actually see a rocket go off. Mayor, I have no report. There we go. My favorite kind. Mr. Group? Yeah. Ditto. I like ditto. <laughs> Councilman Hinkett. What time's the rocket going off? 740 something. 743. All right, I'm going to make this like 30 seconds, okay? Because I know you want to oh, see. Oh, no, you got time. It was um, only teasing. If we missed the rocket. Wanted, we missed the rocket. No, no, no. We won't miss it. This is real, real quick. I, I would just like to see if you guys would uh, approve a discussion item or uh, at, a, at a future work session a program to address street signs and potholes um, in the city. Street signs are becoming to where it's. I'm not on Facebook. But I'm getting calls there where people are complaining about street signs that are bent, falling over. You know, I talked to Brian a little bit today. He had some ideas. Maybe we can put this together. But if you all think that um, street signs need at least a program and not just, you know, when they break, we go out and fix them, but something similar to the road repaving. And the same thing with potholes. You know, potholes are, are popping up all over the place, and they just seem to stay there. So I just think we need to... Um, address that if you all agree that we could have some discussion at some point whenever it Mr. will be. I talked to Mr. Cobb today. He thought maybe sometime in March at, a, at our work session would be good. If we could make those topics, that would be fine. Do you have time on a work session in March? The March 30th. I thought it would be good since we'll be talking about the budget. 
Okay. You know, implementing a new program, if you wanted to implement, implement a new program, it would be a good time to talk about it. And we could have some uh, dollar figures, what each sign cost and blah, 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 something. Like that. And it, But just in the meantime, on main drags into the city, out of the city, if it could just go out and fix some of them and, and ones that are really bad. And then um, one other thing that I wanted to bring up to you guys. Well, let me just get consensus. Is there yes. consensus to add that to the Was that a yes? It, 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 you know, it almost looked like a, a, a hiccup or, you hiccup. know, another. Sure. Okay, you're good, and then, good yeah. on the end there? Okay, and I'm then, good. And then just one other thing, um, I think we're going to have to address the bricks out in front of City Hall here that go from Clara Lee Evans across to the thing. I know Bobby's been pulling his hair out trying to keep them together, but, you know, we put bricks out there and they're sinking all the time. It's a high maintenance thing. Um, I, I understand the need it was to match what was going on in Oviedo on the park so it would look uniform, but you can't drive... 30,000 cars a day over bricks. And if you go out there right now, you'll see in east and west, they're sinking, and there's a lot of maintenance required. So whether it's stamped like it is up at King's Bridge at 434, just stamped on concrete, but I don't think we should just keep repairing that. I think, you know, and I'll leave that in the hands of, of Bobby and, and Brian, if you all have to weigh in, but, you know, gateway into our new jewel should not be after, you know, a couple of months caving. And you feel it when you drive over it. And when bricks pop up, Get flat tires and all kinds of stuff. So, just however very, we can get there to look. Very at dangerous, that. especially if you're on a motorcycle. One of those things pops up on you. Mr. Cobb, is there a plan to address it? I really didn't have a chance to talk to Mr. Mr. Uh, Wyatt to today. Since it was since it was asked this evening, can we get a briefing uh, mm -hmm. memo, perhaps sure. you know, sent out, just let council know how we're going to address it or what we're going to do with it, or if we're going to eliminate? I had a brief. I got something else for you. Sounds good, Mr. Mayor. That's it. Deputy Mayor. Well, all righty, perfect. Councilman Brink. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been really good. No reports oh, last, last few months. Yes. I did attend the first chamber board meeting last week. It was very interesting and um, met the new director, Todd. I can't remember his last name, but very nice gentleman. Um, maybe at that workshop we can also talk about the fees of Oviedo on the Park because it was mentioned in that meeting that um, the chamber probably will not be able to bring the barbecue blowout, the two signature events that we have, they have, we have with them. Um, they may not be able to bring it because of the cost. So we, I think it, we need to have a little bit of discussion about that. Bring it where, I'm sorry. To Oviedo on the Park from the mall. That's the board speaking? Or is yes. that Todd and Bridget speaking? Um, that was the whole, it was a board meeting, so it was pretty much in consensus that I could tell. Well, then they can keep them over at the mall. Yeah. Well, they, they were. Uh, honestly, and I, and I don't mean to sound coy, what I think you're going to learn is that, you know, a lot of times it's, oh my God, the sky is falling, you know, and then it all kind of comes back. Mm -hmm. Well, I, it, to be honest with you, it did cut, bring up a few issues and, and discussion that I thought maybe we needed to discuss in public. So um, might be a good workshop. Yeah, and add that to the workshop. We could be here a few hours, sure. you know. Um, yeah, but that should be a separate one with the chamber. We should have. I think you want to have it without the chamber, don't you? I'm sorry. Yeah, without the chamber. You want with us. Time without the chamber. Yeah. So discuss some things before going to the chamber. Yeah. Mayor, I, I think what the deputy mayor wants to do is have a discussion about our fees. Yeah. So at the work session, you know, like, once again, talking about budget, you know, yeah. discussing your and, fees, and that's a good topic at yeah. your work session. Oh, okay. Oh, I missed that part. That I um, yesterday, we attended the... Uh, the parade and the Martin Luther King dedicate um, the Martin Luther King celebration, which was very nice. You two were definitely missed. I told them you were a bit under the weather, but it was a nice event, beautiful weather. Um, Senator Marco Rubio sent a very nice letter to be read, and I meant to bring it tonight to give it to Barbara, but I'll I'll drop it off this week. It was a very very nice letter, and that's all I have. So, so see, I have a copy of it. I, went, I was going to bring it for Barbara to make a copy and, or even give them the original. I heard it was a rousing letter. 
It was what? It was a rousing letter. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Anything else, Deputy Mayor? No, that's it. All righty. Councilman Britton? I'm just going to piggyback. I have one item on the, the parade. Uh, I thought it was great. And Marco Rubio, Senator Rubio's staff member who delivered the letter, also sang the national anthem. And he's got a voice. Oh, somebody I forget told me that. Who told Council. you? Told yeah. me. Joe well, Adams. Adams. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did a very good job. So if uh, perhaps maybe we can send him a letter and and thank him for uh, coming and, and participating with us. And also, uh, well, hang, hang on one second. Mr. Cobb, can we get a letter for Mr. Adams from the council and the staff thanking him for his attendance? And we'll have it signed and sent off. Do you want all of you to sign it or just you, Mayor? That's up to the council. I'm getting, I'm getting pointed at. I'll come by and sign yeah. it. Okay. okay. But have it come from all of us. And while you, while he's right, I'm just going to finish up here and, and congratulate uh, Deputy Mayor Drago. You did a great job uh, oh. as Master of Ceremonies Thank up there. I was very proud of you. And uh, you, you kicked it off uh, in a very fine manner. So Thank good job. Thank you. Thank you. Mini Mayor help? No, he wasn't there. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> you were taking over. I know. That's Counselor, it. anything else? That's it. Um, I have nothing to report on this evening, but I would like an update on what just happened at the DOT meeting, Bobby. Brief mm -hmm. synopsis, how many people were in Three attendance? Three minutes. I was so ready to answer questions because I just answered more questions than I ever anticipated <laughs> at that meeting. So I was on a roll. Um, actually, about 100 uh, people showed up, and, that, that, and I don't mean uh, in total, I mean residents or property owners along along the strip on phase two. That's probably the biggest one ever. Most of them I are only say, attended yeah, was, by 30 was, or 40 people. I was shocked in attendance, but the, the engineer was there in force. Uh, Commissioner Horan was there. Mm -hmm. um, only elected official. Um, well, we're all here. I oh, know. No, <laughs> um, I heard that uh, Commissioner Delore might show up, but he wasn't in attendance. And uh, several DOT, and the presentation only lasted 10 minutes. Um, it was very good, very succinct, and mostly there were attorneys and property owners asking questions. But I thought it was very good. Any feedback from residents, or was it really just a matter of uh, when are you taking my property I and how much you're paying me for it? I didn't hear anything negative. Um, specifically, it was just a matter of when and are you, you know, are you taking my property. I had one gentleman in the, uh, specifically ask me about the alleyway behind uh, you know, Gerda's and the dance studio, mm -hmm. and there's an alleyway through there asking me about that for his parking and some things. But I had to direct him back to the engineer because some of, the, some of those issues I'm not completely up on yet. So, all in all, I thought it was really good. That, that's good to hear. What about the um, 426 swing over? I know we're working on that out of the one cent sales tax. Yes, sir. We've identified. My understanding it. is it wasn't shown on these drawings because it was taken out of the DOT plan. Yes, sir. Because they have the actual, the existing 60% plan shown on their boards right now. But that's just 60%. Where there's still hopefully some modifications to come. We have that project identified as a third generation sales tax project to do hopefully in tandem with phase two. But there's still some engineering that has to take place to make sure the intersection is set up and ready for it. All right. So all in all, it sounded like it was positive feedback. And like I said earlier, it's when are you taking my property and how much can I get for it? Yes, sir. I heard nobody complaining. So. Any questions for Bobby? Mm -hmm. Bobby, thank you for doing my report. <laughs> yes, sir. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Councilor Shank. Uh, again, I like all the MLK uh, comments. Uh, Drew's staff did a great job. Well, it was great. Everything went well. Uh, everybody seems to be having a great time. So they really did a great, great job overall. Um, Cops and Cars coming up this Saturday at the mall. Um, the mayor gave the uh, State of the City at the Chamber two weeks ago. Did a great job there. And uh, we're looking to do that in a bigger way so everybody can get a, a look at that in one shot. Um, and the uh, prayer breakfast also the week before uh, that was part of the MLK celebration. It was a very nice event also. Oh, I That's forgot it. about that. That was awesome. Yep. That's right. And, and next year the prayer breakfast will be in the amphitheater on the same. Possibly. Awesome. <laughs> Anything else from anybody? No other business before us? With that all being said, this meeting is adjourned.